Hey everyone and welcome back. So I got something in the mail today that has had a rather profound impact on me this afternoon. And uh, what I mean is that over the last couple of hours, uh, I've kind of been really stuck in some deep thought, um, reminiscing and really going back to some very poignant and uh, vivid memories of an experience that I had now 10 years ago. And I, that's part of the reason that I think it's hit me so hard um, is that the particular item I received in the mail relates to something that uh, has just come up uh, with a 10 year anniversary. Now where I'm going with this has to do with a very specific elephant in the room. Uh, there's a particular part of my life that I don't really talk about or share on this channel, uh, other than a few quick passing mentions that I've, I've had in other videos. But if you're watching this for my motorcycle content or my Brompton content, then you probably don't even know about this. But if you've been with me since the beginning, way, way back, the 2007 through hike videos, you'll know that there is a large part of my life that's dedicated to adventures on two feet, hence the channel name. Um, and more specifically, uh, my adventures on trails, both hiking and running. Where I'm going with this uh, and why this has all kind of come up today is because, as I said, it is the 10 year anniversary of a very specific event that I participated in exactly 10 years ago called the Barkley Marathons. And um, I don't really like to talk about it all that much because partly um, a, a huge reason why I chose to, to do this event was for sort of the inner uh, journey and the self-exploration and kind of just seeing what I was capable of doing. And I didn't really have any intent on necessarily making that public or sharing that information with people I just kind of wanted to go do this thing in the woods um, but it so happened that the year that I participated in this event there was a documentary crew there and so <laughs> not planned certainly but I ended up being featured on a major documentary um, so if you've seen the documentary you might now remember or recognize where you've seen me before uh, which is also part of the reason that I have such a hard time talking about this because it, it is weird uh, to be in a film, um, especially when you weren't planning to be in a film. And uh, for several years after this particular film came out, um, you know, a lot of people in the running community watched it and I would go to events or I would just be walking down the street in Boston and someone would come running across the street and say, I just watched you on Netflix last night. It was very strange. So why am I telling you all this? Um, because I just, I was overwhelmed today uh, with a lot of emotion thinking about this particular event. Now that what I got in the mail uh, was a book. So this is the book I got and it's called The Finishers. And it features, um, stories and, and responses and text related to all of the finishers of this particular event called the Barkley Marathons. And um, I had received this book before uh, when it first came out, but it was in all French because the authors of this book are both French. And I speak a little French, I can read a little French. And so, you know, I kind of flipped through it and thought it was neat and whatever and but just sort of figured it would it would so few people were going to buy it because of the, the language uh, that it was just not a big deal so I, I essentially just put it on the shelf over there and kind of forgot about it and sitting on the shelf right now so but then it was translated into English and now it is selling everywhere and uh, people are contacting me and I got my copy in the mail and I just I wasn't expecting to be so overwhelmed, but um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I remember being interviewed for this and I remember two things. I remember the questions were kind of very generic 
And I remember my responses, uh, I felt like they were very cliche and I just didn't really put a lot of thought into them. So I wasn't expecting to, to I didn't even really want to read my, my stuff because I thought it was going to be really embarrassing or whatever. But when I flipped some of the section, which is again, very strange, you know, I flipped this book open and literally there's an entire page <laughs> with my face on it, which is very strange. Um, but then when you, you get into the chapters, you know, there's these little little snippets and it's basically just the interviewer's question and then my responses. And I gotta tell you, I, I was flipping through it and uh, I got incredibly emotional. And, uh, and then I started to think about the fact that it's the 10 year anniversary. And uh, yeah, it, it kind of knocked me out for the rest of the afternoon, just kind of really thinking back. And I started remembering all of these things about the event and also the training leading up to the event uh, that I'd kind of forgotten about. And um, <laughs> so it's, it's actually making me emotional right now. And um, it really, it, it, it was very poignant and profound. And, and I just, I wanted to make this video because I wanted to remember this feeling so in 10 years from now, I can come back and watch this and remember just how transformative of an experience this event was for me. Just like my through hikes where I've spent four months hiking on the Pacific Crest Trail or whatever, where you, know, you get to that end and you touch that final terminus sign and it's just like all of those feelings come rushing back from, from all the days on the trail and all the people you met and the towns you went into and the highs and the lows. And I know this event was a single weekend. It was 60 hours, um, but it was so transformative for me. And, uh, and the other thing is, is I was actually, as I read through my responses, it made me re remember a lot of things about what I said to these guys as they were uh, talking to me. And, you know, some of my responses were certainly cliche, but um, one of the things that I think really put me over the edge uh, was, was this one response, and I'm gonna read it to you. Uh, the question I was asked was, do you think modern life is lacking in adventure? And I really thought long and hard about this response, and while it is a little bit um, canned and cliche, uh, there's a point here that I want to I want to make sure I get across. So my response was, I do. Um, I said, if you go back and you read the books from great naturalists like John Muir, and you realize that people are now just sitting in for long hours in their offices and how they're missing out on the world, and and I said, you don't necessarily have to go to Yosemite or Grand Canyon to experience the wonders of this world. You can go down to that little park down the street for a trail run or down to the river. Um, and for example, Frozen Head State Park, which is where this event takes place, is a tiny little park in the mountains of Tennessee. Um, but it's beautiful and you could get lost exploring the mountains for days. Uh, so what I, where I concluded this was by saying, I really, I personally really need that time in the woods of the mountains to find my inner peace. Uh, if I were just sitting in an office all day, every day and not getting out, I would not be very happy or fulfilled. Um, and so I like to go to places even as remote as Antarctica. And while I'm there for three months uh, and it's hard work and it's my research and it's essentially my job, um, it's still me getting out there and exploring. And then this is the final sentence. And I said, so I guess in many ways, deep down, I'm just an explorer. And that was the sentence that, that put me over because if you've been watching my videos over the last few months, you'll know I posted a video about my long journey over the last 25 years of trying to uh, get a position with NASA as an astronaut. Uh, I've applied to seven calls for the astronaut candidate program over the years and uh, constantly been bettering myself and getting additional degrees and training and pilot's licenses and all these different things in an effort to make myself the best candidate. And uh, to this day, I've been unsuccessful. But the point of that video was that it took me 40 years to realize my passion and my purpose is that of an explorer. And so when I read that line there, it just really 
reiterated to myself that no matter when I'm asked that question, I always come back to that. Um, and I love that, that um, yeah, I love that I said that because it really does speak to where my heart is. Um, so yeah, again, this <laughs> really, really hit me hard today. Um, I'm excited to read about some of my other friends and such in here, but the, the other thing that I, 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 I came to realize as I was flipping through this book and thinking about my memories is how much that I had forgotten. And one of the most common things that I get asked when, when I, people talk about this event and the fact that I finished it um, is that on paper, um, I'm not really someone that you would expect to finish this event. I'm not an elite runner. I'm not a um, you know high nationally ranked or anything like that. I'm just I'm an average trail runner. Um, and a lot of people, because of that, think like, well, how the heck did you finish this race? What, what was your secret? Like what, you, you must have had some inside knowledge or something because it's just so hard for people to believe. And if you've watched the documentary, what I say in that is true, but what this got me remembering is, and something that I, I really don't share with people, is just how much I trained for this event. People think like, oh, you know, you just gotta run, you know, run every day or do some hill repeats or whatever and study some maps and you'll be good. And what people don't understand is that when I made the decision to run this event, it was a full entire life consuming obsession. Uh, I found out I was gonna be running this race uh, right around New Year's that year. And I was literally still at a remote field camp in West Antarctica, living in a tent on the ice sheet. And yet I was running 10 miles a day at minus 30 degrees on the ice sheet of Antarctica. And then by the time, and then when I did get home a few weeks later, I was running 100 plus miles a week 30 to 50,000 mile feet, sorry, 30 to, 30 to 50,000 feet of elevation gain, um, probably six to eight hours a day of training while still doing my graduate research. I didn't see my, my partner for three months. She was busy doing her dissertation work anyway, but people don't understand. It's not like training for a marathon where you go out and you do your 12 miler and you're done. I would get up for four hours in the morning to do hill repeats Go into, go into school, do my research, and then do another four hours at night of hill repeats. Thousands and thousands of feet of gain, hundreds of repeats every single day. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I would go out for eight hours each day and do a 25 mile loop each day with 15,000 feet of gain uh, each day. So, I mean, that's the kind of commitment. Every night I would fall asleep with maps and race reports like literally on my chest because I was that's the last thing I wanted to read before I fell asleep. I was probably sleeping two to three hours a night uh, preparing for this race. So it, it, it's an absolute obsession that you have to you have to get into. And I realized how unhealthy that was, um, and just how uh, absolutely consuming it was. And I think that's why it was it, it made such an indelible mark uh, on my soul because um, it it was just so much of a commitment. I mean, honestly, I studied harder for this event than I did for my comprehensive exams for my dissertation. Don't tell my advisor I said that, but uh, you know, obviously, I still passed my dissertation. But um, just you know, it, it's like training for a doctoral program because it's like one of these things where uh, it seems like all the little things you're doing are so small and insignificant, they don't matter, but yet it adds up to this huge novel. Like you're writing a book and you're, you're working on page one of 300. You know, it's, it's, uh, there's a quote that I tell my students all the time that I think is very apropos here. And I always get it wrong, so I'm just gonna paraphrase it, but it's a quote from Gandhi. And my students, um, when it comes to topics of um, you know, what you can do for the environment, you know, sustainability efforts and going more green and all these things, the ways that you can sort of reduce your footprint and such. I always quote um, Gandhi and there's this line where he says, um, all the, the little things that you do uh, will seem insignificant when you're doing them, more or less. 
uh, but it is essential that you do them because they do matter. And even though while you're doing it, it seems so inconsequential and small, like, oh, I'm out doing a measly five miler today for training, why? Or I'm doing a thousand feet of gain. But you do that every day and you build it up and you build it up and you build it up. And that's how you end up doing ridiculous loops around the Barkley course. So, you know, I, again, I don't talk about this and I didn't really have any plans to talk about this on a video or make a video of just me talking for 20 minutes. But I, it was so poignant today and it was, it was just so emotional of a roller coaster thinking back to this and realizing it was the 10 year anniversary and thinking about all the training and thinking about how now, you know, I look at myself now and yeah, I'm still active. I still do these runs and these bikes and stuff, but like, you know, I've, I'm sitting in a house and I've got a nice comfortable job and, you know, and it, it, it also makes me realize like, I don't want to lose that spirit of adventure and make sure that I still get out and tap that part of uh, my life that I need to keep tapped into that that exploration that explorer so whew, a lot of heavy stuff but um, if you are interested in learning more about what the heck I'm talking about the Barkley marathons I, I can point you to the documentary it's weird because you're gonna watch it and be like hey I, I know that guy that's the on two feet guy um, the documentary is called The Race That Eats Its Young. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's the name of the, that's the, name of the uh, documentary. I'll, I'll put a link below. Um, and I don't even know where it is anymore. If it's still on Netflix, it might be on Amazon Prime now or Apple TV or I don't even know. I know you can buy it on, on um, Apple Move or whatever, iTunes or whatever it is. So it's a really good, I thought they did a really good job. It's very strange that it's like features... Uh, me, which is, God, it just sounds really weird saying that. Um, but it was just, it was just timing. It just happened to be that that year I, uh, they were there. So I, there's uh, several other documentaries that have come out since. There was one that came out in, a few years ago called uh, Where Dreams Go to Die, uh, which is also incredibly moving and emotional. And it has to, uh, the story revolves around a very well-known Canadian trail runner named Gary Robbins and his experience at the Barkley which um, I was there the year that that was filmed as well, crewing for a friend, and it was oh, it was absolutely wild and emotional and tragic and amazing and uh, just yeah. So also very recommended. But that's all I really have to say. Uh, I just want to finish off by by just telling you all that uh, make sure that if there is something stirring within you, there's that thing that you can't shake. Maybe it's, you know, I really want to put that collection of photos together and make a photo book. Or maybe I want to finish that silly idea of writing a children's book. Or I want to get that Honda and ride across the country. Or even if it's something silly, like I want to buy a scooter and do the scooter cannonball or something. You know, there's so many cool things out there. And we're not getting any younger. I know it's cliche, but man, don't uh, don't let the years go by. If there's something that you want to go after, like the Barkley or climbing all the 14ers in Colorado or hitting all the state high points, or I don't know, you name it. There's so many millions of things. They're traveling to 50 different countries, learning a language, man. I, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm at a therapy session here and or a motivational speaker. <laughs> it's not what I'm trying to do. I don't want to be that guy. I'm just trying to uh, reiterate <clears throat> that, um, you know, in the, in the spirit of, what is it, Walter Mitty, that movie or whatever, where it's like, you know, get out there and seize the day. So uh, be the uh, Mr. Keating from Dead Poets Society. Get out there and, and uh, make something happen. So... Whew, yeah. So needless to say, I did not get a lot of work done this afternoon because my head was all over the place thinking about Barkley and uh, just what a profound impact it's had on my life. So yeah, very cool. Um, very cool. <laughs> That's weird. Thank you guys. That's really all I got. And please feel free to ask me any questions. And um, yeah, thanks for sticking through to the end. Take care. See you guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.